Hey guys, recently I just finished getting the Platinum on Sifu and wanted to share a few tips I picked up along the way. Not only that, but to add on to the info the tutorials teach you as there's a lot that's overlooked in there. With these tips you should get a better understanding of how fights work and hopefully helps you reach bosses younger than ever. In the first tutorial, the lessons focus on teaching how, how blocking works and how it affects your structure gauge. There's a few things it fails to mention though, which is how weapons can affect it too. Blocking against enemies with bladed weapons still causes your health to take chip damage, as well as structure for each hit you block. Come on. This can be avoided though by having a weapon of your own to block with, which isn't too hard as there's a lot of weapons sprinkled throughout every stage. Taking a weapon into the Kuroki fight can help a lot, as it will let you block her attack safely, letting you stay in the fight a lot longer so you can start studying and seeing her patterns. For Lessons 2 and 3, there's really not much to add on to. I couldn't find anything on those topics that were overlooked. Lesson 4 focused on how to avoid attacks, however although it does show you can fully punish some attacks after a dodge, it doesn't mention that you can go right into a throw after attacking them once. This can help get someone off you fast, which is super helpful if you're in a crowded area, and would prefer stunning a few guys first by throwing them around. You can even just throw them off ledges too if you're in the right environment. The last bit I can add on to this section is how regaining structure works. The tutorial mentions how you can recover structure by dodging, but it didn't mention that structure is also recovered if you're just not doing anything. Keep in mind though that it doesn't recover when you're sprinting. This can be overlooked when you're running to the next fight, so keep it in mind after a big fight and take your time getting to the next one. You can even just stop and let it recharge. Don't worry about your combo too, as it's saved between fights. The tutorial also mentions punishing opponents after specific attacks, but there's more to this that we'll discuss later. Finally, there's unique enemy attacks in Lesson 5. It mentions that you need to avoid grabs, but you can also just react with your own focus attack to simply turn the fight quicker into your favor. You can use this approach if you're just not feeling up to dodging one night or if you're missing the timing. Of course, you gotta make sure you have enough gauge to be able to use one though. Finally, there's the free training mode. You may have been in here when you first started the game, before or after the tutorials. What the game doesn't mention or show is that every enemy type you beat for the first time becomes an option for the target dummy in here, giving you the chance to practice their patterns for future runs. This includes bosses too, including their second phases as well, so if you need to practice Kuroki more, this is the best place for it. Next are some general tips I picked up throughout my completion of the game, first being the photo mode button. Unbind this. That's it. This is just to be safe in case you fat finger it one time during a fight, as nothing hurts your momentum more in the heat of a crowded fight than a random pause menu popping up. It's of course in the button binds, and it requires a few clicks to finally disable it. It might not happen often, but better safe than sorry. The biggest tip I can try to explain is how there is a difference between stuns and dazes. The game kind of tells you about this, but it's kind of hidden as it's only mentioned on the whiteboard if you click on a specific sticky note and read it at the bottom here. If you're able to land multiple stuns in a row, usually three from my tests, it leads to a dazed enemy state. Although it looks like a stun, it's a slightly longer one and is only indicated by a specific chime noise that will play once you hit them. On a PS5, this noise will come through your controller too. The sound you're looking for is the following. When you hear this noise, immediately go into your best combos, as this is the best scenario to be in to pile on the damage since they won't be able to block anytime soon. Especially against bosses, as you're able to get two throws in usually during this instance if you react fast enough. Basically, whenever you hear this noise and get a dazed enemy, make it count. Now for the unlockable focus attacks, you may have unlocked this move called the double palm, and eventually you might want to use it, only to realize it's not an option for any of the directions. It's not easy to tell, but the secret here is that it's because it's targeting the chest. You simply need to not choose any direction and it'll appear. Although it's not the best move from what I tried, but to get the achievement for using every focus attack in the game, this may be the one you're missing. Now speaking about achievements, you may have noticed in the achievement list, but there's one about an instant kill move in the game for knives. The game doesn't tell you how to do it, but it relies on unlocking the charge back fist ability once acquired, you now have access to it. It mentions in the description that it'll stun with a knife, but it'll actually just lead to a free kill against any opponent. Once you have charge back fist, you can now charge up your attack. If you're holding a knife, it'll just charge up the knife attack. If charged enough, it'll simply stab an enemy and take them down immediately, taking the katana with them. 
You'll lose the sword permanently, but in some instances, totally worth it. Especially on elites, as you now don't even need to fight them. Even the CEO's elite disciple is no match for this at the end of the level. Which is funny, since she's standing right beside two katanas for you to use on her. You can just walk up, charge up, and bring her down. Careful of the spacing, though. Since the game's release, it seems they have changed how the combo system works a few times. Who knows, by the time you're watching this or playing the game, they may have changed it again. One key thing to note is that your combo is safe between fights, meaning you don't need to rush to the next fight in fear of your multiplier deflating. Once the final enemy in a fight goes down, it locks in your combo until the next fight breaks out. Note how my score multiplier is safe as I go between these three rooms, doing nothing. Once the next fight starts, my score is still intact. There is a style system implemented in this, similar to the Devil May Cry combos, but not as strict. A yellow score means you're playing perfectly and gaining the maximum points per hit. Orange usually means that you're starting to slack off and probably should switch up your attacks a bit. If your score is in the red, that means you're boring and likely relying on a small number of moves. Here you can see that I'm just jabbing non-stop and that my score is always in the red. Of course, taking hits and not doing anything for too long will start to bring down your style too. To be safe, try not to use the same move or combo no more than 2-3 times over the course of a few seconds. There's enough basic combos to avoid staleness, but if you're aiming for high scores in every level, you're going to need to bust out some bigger and unlocked moves. If you make a mistake or two or take a big hit that takes down your multiplier, don't be afraid to use taunts in the Calbit focus attack to make up for it. Taunting is a free combo boost, but don't spam it. Try to use it at most once per enemy. Don't be afraid to throw one out too amongst a crowd, as you can cancel at any time if someone's looking to throw a punch. The Calbit focus attack is a huge combo boost, as it should be for a bar of focus. If something goes wrong and you see your multiplier going down fast, quickly fire off one of these at an enemy to make up the difference and get you back to making more points. Just look at the boost it gives! Finally, to get the most out of any fight, try not to execute every enemy when the chance comes up. I can't find any confirmation on if executes are better or not for your combo, but executing an enemy as early as possible seems to give you more points based on their remaining health. However, constantly executing will affect staleness as well. Throwing someone off a ledge though doesn't count as an execute, so be sure to add these in whenever you have the opportunity. The sooner the better for the sake of points. So that's about all I've got for this vid. I do have another vid on the way that should help you get through some annoying fights easier if you're having trouble. For now though, be sure to hop onto the free training and give these tips a try. Maybe one of them was just the advice you needed to shave off a few years off your life. In a good way, of course.